you, know, you guys love doing that. I'm this crazy psychopathic liar. Absolutely. I mean, either I'm lying or I'm not lying. And, and this goes to the crux of this argument. Either I'm a liar to you, I'm going to lie to you right now about everything, like I did to Peel Regional, according to their story, or I'm not. I mean, come on. Okay. Enough manipulation. You know what I mean? Either you tell the truth or don't. Otherwise, the whole purpose of any interview is just stupid. Paul Bonato grew up in a wealthy but highly dysfunctional family for reasons I can't even include here. At the age of 16, his mother told him he was the outcome of an extramarital relationship she had. The man he had thought to be his biological father wasn't. Bernardo's victims include three teenage girls that suffered fatal injury. He was aided by his girlfriend, Carla. They were nicknamed Ken and Barbie. On September 1, 1995, Bernardo was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He scored an alarming 35 out of 40 on the psychopathy checklist. What does deception look like? What are the speech patterns of a deceptive person? Paul Bernardo answers these questions and reveals psychopathic traits in the process. As I'll point out, his speech patterns point to lack of remorse and guilt, lack of emotional dimension, which I'll explain, attempts to portray himself in a favorable light at the expense of his victims, attempts to blame others for his own negative personal characteristics, and enjoyment of manipulating the conversation. My comments are mostly verbal, but there'll also be a few written comments. As always, I'll be using statement analysis, SA, and conversation analysis, CA. In the description to this video, you'll find a short description about these methods. Let me know what you find interesting about this interview in the comments below. Let's go for it. Again, my name is Brad Hoover, and today is June the 7th, 2007. I'm here to tell you that I have concluded that investigation and that um, there have been two offenses that I have been able to identify and um, with the information that you provided to me at that time was able to uh, conclude those matters um, as having been committed by yourself. So for that, I thank you for that information. The detective says he thanks Bernardo for the information. When dealing with a certain personality type, detectives will frequently flatter the subject and allow him to think he has the upper hand in the interview. This feeds into the subject's ego and sense of superiority. Politeness and restraint characterize the detective's behavior in this interview. They often let Bernardo dominate the conversation. They let him tell on himself, so to speak. Uh, sorry, you've identified Identified the offense. No, no, no. I've identified the offense that you were talking about, and uh, based on that information, I was able to conclude those cases that, uh, that actually provided enough information that I was satisfied that you were the person that committed those offenses. Okay. Now, what Does that about? Make sense? And it makes sense. What about ones that you thought that I came forward with, and maybe thought that I didn't do it? Was there any of those? Um, there was none that I thought that you didn't do. There was some that I didn't have enough information to either identify the offense because uh, you were unable to provide enough details at that time or um, they may not have ever been reported to the police. As you said in, when we spoke, some of them were, uh, we'll call them minor type offenses, but uh, no, I understand. Uh, offenses that may not have been reported to the police. When they say it's understood that answering with a question is a way for the subject to deflect and buy more time, as we'll see, Bernardo does this a lot. It's one of the most common indicators that the subject's being deceptive. Lastly, Bernardo's behavior is contrapuntal. Contrapuntal means there's a discrepancy between how he acts and how he's expected to act. He's the one who committed these offenses, yet he's also the one criticizing law enforcement. He shows no remorse about the crimes that he did commit. Instead, he's concerned with the crimes that he allegedly didn't commit. His focus is himself. Okay, um, problem. Uh, I turned on the TV, I waited for Peel Regional to come by. September rolls around, they, they make a public announcement, it's written on my file here that, uh, that I lied to police and I did not commit the crimes that I said I committed on, on the offenses in Peel Region. Okay. Big problem. I have spoken to Peel Region yeah. and um, they have told me that 
they don't have enough information at this point to identify anything that you um, the, the letter that was sent to the police to, through to the police wasn't specific enough to identify any offenses now that's something that we can talk about um, sort of following this interview and if you want to get into that we can talk about that well I've been sitting with this for years and it's, it's written on my file and it, it makes me seem like oh he's just this crazy you, know, you guys love doing that I'm this crazy psychopathic liar why was that statement issued? Why didn't they come in and talk to me if they didn't have enough information? We were waiting on that tape. You can play that tape back. I, I, you know, I asked you guys, is Pure Regional going to come in? I sat there month after month after month. No one came. I turned on the TV in September. Pure Regional you know, declared that Paul Bernardo was you know, this crazy liar to, to, to police. What, what, what's the fundamental problem here? Well, I, I, no, I mean, I justice the Canadian way, and, uh, and, and, and no one comes in, and now you guys are saying that you didn't have enough information. With his claim you guys love doing that, he again blames law enforcement, trying to portray himself as a victim of their alleged lies. In SA, it's understood that people can't help but tell the truth, not all the time, but some of the time. Sometimes subjects make statements that we wouldn't expect them to make in certain settings. These unexpected statements reveal what these subjects think about themselves. In other words, SA believes what people say, here, it's unexpected that Bernardo would use the words crazy psychopathic liar about himself. Furthermore, referring to himself in the third person suggests that he considers himself an icon. Bernardo keeps asking questions to counterattack, and he engages in hyperbolic language by repeating month three times. Hyperbolic language used for dramatic effect, and in this case, used to emphasize his role as a victim. He puts pressure on the detectives instead of the other way around. So now the detectives have to waste time explaining to him. Listen to this. I can't answer for them specifically as to what they did or didn't do. Um, I can tell you that because they're a separate police department, I don't have any control over what investigation that they did do. I can tell you that I have spoken with the, uh, an investigator in Peel region, and they have told me that at this point they don't have enough information to move forward, they haven't been able to um, identify any offense that was specifically talked about. That statement you're giving me is much different than the public statement okay. they said, which said I was a liar. Okay, well, I don't... I don't There's I night didn't, and day and they didn't come in. If they didn't have enough information, why don't you come in and get the information? Absolutely. I mean, either I'm lying or I'm not lying. And, and this goes to the crux of this argument. Either I'm a liar to you, I'm a lie to you right now about everything, like I did to Peel Regional, according to their story, or I'm not. And, you know, I, I just... I just I, I'm not going to sit here and you know, come voluntarily and have people come you guys ban me from the press, you, you roll your stories over, and you constantly say that I'm a liar, I'm a liar. I made mistakes 17 years ago. I said, okay, fine, I did. But, but now we're talking about today, and you're not going to roll forward that I'm some psychopathic liar sitting in jail claiming other people's responsibilities for other crimes. This is a total cross-examination point. You want to start this thing? Lockyer is going to grab a hold of it and say, well, he lied about other crimes. You know, he's a, he's a crazy liar. Why didn't you guys resolve this? He says, either I'm lying or I'm not lying and later that he's either a liar or he's not. At no point in this passage does he say that he's telling the truth. He leaves us with two opportunities, that he's lying or not lying. Not lying is phrased in the negative. He doesn't use the noun truth. So lying is on his mind, truth is not. Notice how he himself introduces the words, I'm a liar and lie to you right now about everything. We should believe what he's telling us. Notice how he emphasizes his confession with the adverbial time restriction right now, suggesting that he is in fact lying to them in this very moment. His talk about lying points to an extreme level of self-awareness. This self-awareness shows us that the thought of lying is on his mind, which again points to deception. He says, I made mistakes 17 years ago. In this context, the noun mistakes is a euphemism downplaying the horrific nature of his crimes in order to present himself in a favorable light. With Fine I Did, we expect an upcoming contrast. This contrast given in the form of the paratactic conjunction but. Paratactics means placing clauses side by side, one after another. It's the opposite of hypotaxis, where clauses are subordinated to and dependent on one another. Therefore, parataxis is especially useful for a subject to highlight what they want to be the syntactic focus of their utterance. 
The function of but is to minimize and negate the preceding statement. In this case, Bernardo is quote-unquote taking ownership of his quote-unquote mistakes. Linguistically, he's more interested in defending himself than taking ownership of his crimes. This is in line with what we've observed so far. It's common for deceptive subjects to distinguish between a past and present level, to direct the detective's attention to the present and not the atrocities of the past. Next, the detectives are forced to repeat that they can't answer for Peel region. Their defense buys Bernardo more time. And again, I can't answer for what Peel region did or didn't do. Um, Jurisdictionally, we're kind of bound well, as to yeah, what takes place. But still, the, the good guys, guys the bad guys, you know what I mean? You're on the same team. Yes, we are, but as far as us investigating matters that take place outside of the actual Toronto proper, um, that's why Peel Regional has their police service, and like Detective Hoover said, we can't answer as to what they did with their investigations or the, the issues that they were looking at that transpired out in their area, and, and we really can't speak to that. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's something you wish to have your counsel deal with yeah, them on, and that's something else, but unfortunately there, we, there wasn't a lot that uh, Detective Hoover and I could do in regards to those things. In the following, we should also pay attention to the fact that he still can't bring himself to say that he's telling the truth. Instead, he repeats the noun liar excessively. Listen to this. Well, That's he, it whoever watching watch this yeah. thing, they, they should subpoena these guys for Peel Regional. They can bring in all the facts to show just where I lied then, if I'm a liar. That's what I say to do, because I, either I'm a liar or I'm not a liar, and I'm not a liar. But you guys are trying to paint me as one of the public to the public, they, they turned on the TV in September of last year, and I was this crazy liar. Uh, that's what the TV reported, and not only did they report it there, they wrote it on my file. I've got it right myself. Paul Bernardo, uh, Field Regional said Paul Bernardo lied to police about uh, crimes he didn't commit, said he did. Okay. I, I mean, this is, this, that's just awful. I mean, come on. Okay. Enough manipulation, you know what I mean? Either you tell the truth or don't, otherwise the whole purpose of any interview is just stupid. Because if I'm this crazy liar, I'll be just sitting here lying to you about everything, right? Right? I mean, why wouldn't I? I'm just this crazy liar. Bernardo says enough manipulation. It's interesting that the word manipulation is on his mind. Criminal psychology works with the notion of projection. Projection refers to taking unwanted personal traits and attributing them to someone else. Here, Bernardo is doing just that. Manipulating, controlling what they talk about. In psychological terms, he projects his own attempts at manipulating the conversation onto his surroundings. This projection manifests itself in his language. We observe projection again later on. Next, he makes a pathos argument, which means appealing to emotion and pity. And, and again, I don't, I don't know exactly what was said by Phil Region, and I, I'm not here to answer to what they said. And it's either, you know, it's, the it's, it's one thing, it's, it, you know... I'm a human being, and, and, and to say that I'm a dangerous offender and all this stuff is fine. I mean, free publicity, you know, get that, you know, tough on crime, get that bad guy. But but when you go to a certain point of line, it just, I mean, it affects me totally. You know, I made mistakes, I made mistakes a long time ago. But don't say that today about me, because then we're lying, and then we got a big problem, because I'm looking at you, and you're the bad guys, because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not telling the truth, and you guys are walking around issuing statements that I lied here, I lied there. No. The term you know conveys that the subject is self-aware and thus aware of the other people in the room. The detectives are embedded in the personal pronoun you. Even though it's a common term, we take note of it in a situation like this, especially when it's repeated multiple times in a shorter passage. You know presupposes that the other people in the room know what the speaker is talking about. In other words, that the speaker is telling the truth which of course isn't necessarily the case. In certain contexts, the term's an indicator of sensitivity, that what the speaker's saying is highly important to them. And again, the term shows self-awareness, so Bernardo is most likely pretending to seem emotional and human, as he calls himself. Again, the conjunction but marks the beginning of what's closest to Bernardo's mind, what he really wants to say. And once more, we see that he considers his feelings and his struggles to be more important than the proper labels he's been given. Psychopaths, or people with prominent psychopathic traits, lack emotional dimension. They often say the right things, using words that appeal to emotion, but ultimately, they don't sound convincing. That's because their words aren't emotionally grounded, 
but are often aimed at persuasion instead. Bernardo says, I'm a human being, followed by, I mean, it affects me totally. I'm a human being seems aimed at persuading the detectives that he's like them in the most basic sense he could have proposed. A human being. He doesn't say how it affects him, just that it affects him totally. Totally has an emphasizing function. Here, it's a disconnected linguistic element, rather than part of a rooted emotional experience. This is also evidenced by the fact that it's slightly delayed. It's conceivable that Bernardo is indeed affected, but in that case, it relates more so to his pride, to not being called a liar. Not once has he said that he's affected by the victims that he heard, and who were human beings too. His emotional appeal falls flat. Again, he makes a distinction between a past and present level, thereby controlling the direction of the conversation. The distinction is initiated with a contrasting conjunction but, and notice how he does it. He formulates the present level as an imperative, don't say that about me today, a commanding tone. The adverbial construction a long time ago functions as a persuasive linguistic element, convincing the detectives of how long it's been. Once more, the noun mistakes is a euphemism for his atrocious acts. He has a need for control and a desire to portray himself in a favorable light at the expense of his victims. The need for control corresponds to the sadistic nature of his crimes and is an inseparable part of his predatory personality. For the first time, and unusually late in his line of statements, he says that he's telling the truth. The recurring expression, you guys, has a condescending function in the setting. It's clear that he doesn't respect the detective's authority, and he refuses to take the proper humble role of someone being questioned. In the following, notice how he talks to the detectives as if he was their superior, forcing them to constantly take a defensive stance. Well, and again, th those are statements that were issued by Detective Hoover or myself. Or, or yeah, I know, but I mean, this is, it's, like a, it's Attorney General who sent you guys down here. He's fighting the case. He's taking this ball pitch back, right? So it's, it's really all the, it's the same organization. There's an Attorney General I see but, on TV talking about it. But this is a separate matter from what those issues were. But it's still the Attorney sure. General's office. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> very well be, but um, like I said, we, we can't speak to anything that Peel Regional does or statements that they release out to the media um, because they have... You know, it's, a, it's, it's the same thing. If I'm a liar, take the facts that the, that they have. They come down and talk to me. Any cross examine, uh, you know, any defense lawyer, call them up and show me where I'm lying because you're not going to find it. Maybe there's a minor mistake here and there. I think I had one thing about some uh, tree driveway being or trees where you know memory will go over, over time. But to say that is just ridiculous. Just like you guys didn't go. Uh, you guys polygraph Carlo? You didn't ask for the bullet? Nobody from the attorney general went down there. Nobody cared. <clears throat> Again, it's the same. I know, but it's the same problem because you're making me out to be a huge liar, and, and this, this is a problem. Well, I don't, I don't have any doubt as to what you told us before. The, the facts that I can verify, I believe, were true, and, it, and from what you've told me, you haven't told me any lies yet. So I have no personal reason to, to believe that you're lying. To exactly. Me. So I, I get exactly. It. So, but I have a, uh, some questions that were. Uh, that were given to me to, to ask you in relation to the uh, Balkovich matter, Robert Balkovich matter. Um, before we do that, I just want to say, you understand obviously the importance of telling the truth and, and um, the consequences potentially of someone who lies to the police uh, and not telling the truth. I think we just covered that. Actually, I was referring, you guys tell the truth. Right. Okay, so we're aware of that, and um, in this matter, I believe that you've had some conversation with your counsel in, in regards to it, and um, there has been some discussion about polygraph testing in this matter. Is that true or not true, or do you recall that? Well, <laughs> you're opening up cans of worms no, everywhere. I'm, I'm just asking you a, spe a specific question. You know, that goes back to you guys polygraphed everyone with the Camaro, you didn't polygraph Carla, and in, in two years since, have you guys gone down there and asked her? Have you settled the matter with it? Because you could say, I lied, or whatever, polygraph, but have you asked her? Because it, it, it comes down to a lot of that issue. Okay. You know, I mean, have you um, asked her? Has the Attorney General me, gone down there? Okay. He says, I think we just covered that, dismissing the detective's initial utterances. With the collective personal pronoun, we, he aligns himself with the detective's as if this is a collaborative effort, such as a business meeting.
The adverb actually is used to compare two different thoughts. Here Bernardo is comparing the detective's reminder of the importance to tell the truth to his own reminder to the detectives that they should tell the truth. He parrots the detective's words tell the truth. In daily conversations, we parrot each other's words, mostly to make the conversations flow as smoothly and politely as possible. Here, however, Bernardo uses parroting to question the detective's honesty and thus benefit his own agenda. When he's asked a specific question, he stalls by making a counterstatement as part of an insert expansion. Conversations depend on so-called adjacency pairs. The question-answer relation is an example of an adjacency pair. When we ask a question, we expect an answer. When the answer is postponed because the other speaker says something else, it's called an insert expansion since it occurs between the first pair part question and second pair part answer. Here the detective has asked Bernardo a question, but instead of answering, he says that the detective is opening up cans of worms everywhere. The plural cans functions as an overemphasis of Bernardo's critique of the detective. After the detective's defense of his own question, we finally get Bernardo's second pepard response where he blames the detectives for not giving Carla or Barbie a polygraph test because, as he unreliably claims, it comes down to a lot on that issue. In other words, he's trying to throw his ex-girlfriend under the bus for self-serving reasons. Again, he monopolizes the conversation, introducing multiple red herrings. The detectives are most likely aware of the deception, but it's profitable to let Bernardo think that he's outsmarted them. What Bernardo is most likely unaware of, however, is that his word choice says more about him than he would ever directly admit. His word choice points to him being cunning, manipulative, and void of remorse and guilt. All psychopathic traits. In the following, his deceptive strategies become even more apparent. He's asked a direct question, but his answer is anything but direct. This is the point in the interview where his house of cards falls apart completely. Did you kill Elizabeth Bain on June the 19th, 1990? Well, it's a loaded question. I mean, are we going to go back and, 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 and go through the, the time sequence of what happened in my life? I mean, I, I could just give a yes or no answer, but, you know, there's a lot of issues about that. Right. You know, the, the car was my rule. Who did what, where, when, this is why I said, did you guys... Have, you know, go down there to get a polygraph to get to see if she was telling the truth. Like, why didn't Bevan do it in the first place? I mean, he's polygraphing everyone with a Camaro. Why would he make a deal with someone and not give them a polygraph? It, it's not incomprehensible to me. Uh, you know, because now I'm sitting, my file says her version, and it's a lie. <laughs> you know, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, you know, I'm not making frivolous points here. I mean, and now you're asking me. After you, after you said Peel Regional said I'm lying about this, and then you're saying I'm lying about my profile, you're saying I'm lying if I'm better or not. Now you're saying, hey, did you kill this person? I mean, well, you're saying I'm lying here, here, and here. I could say, no, I didn't. Uh, but, I mean, you already said I'm lying here with the Peel, you say. Bernardo claims that the detective's question is loaded. He starts with the discourse marker well, deviating from the direct answer and initiating disagreement. However, he's factually wrong here. This yes-no question's not loaded. They don't need to go through the time sequence of his life as he desperately alleges, because going back in time wouldn't take away from the fact that he committed the crime. He's trying to make the two, going back in time and committing the crime, sound mutually exclusive, which they're not. And unwillingly, he demonstrates awareness of this himself. Firstly, he uses the hedge, I mean, expressing uncertainty and thus actually detracting from his claim to this being a loaded question. Secondly, he says it himself, I could just give a yes or no answer, and I believe him. He knows he could, so the relevant question is, why doesn't he? Because he's stalling with his futile attempts to make things sound complicated. Again, he makes it sound like a collaborative effort. Are we going to go back, as he says? This way of phrasing it doesn't fit the roles in this conversation, the detectives as authority figures and him as the one being questioned. His behavior is contrapuntal. The expression you know enters his language, and it's repeated excessively in this passage, indicating high sensitivity and therefore a high level of internal stress. 
That, in a lot of issues about that, is a vague word, distancing him from the implications of the question. As his internal stress increases, his statements become incoherent, and his attempts to ask counter-questions and make references to his complaint about being accused of lying are revealed for what they are, an act, a smokescreen, deception. His own language reveals as much. Okay, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything no, but about who's lying. I'm simply... Uh, and I've given you directions to go to find the truth. Right. right. No one's, and no one's done that. And I've asked, and, and again, I've told you that I've uh, done investigation on information that you've told me, and, and as a result of that information, I've been able to uh, uh, verify in my mind where you've told me the truth. So if Peel yeah. Region is lying about you or someone else is lying about you, I have no control over that or... No, it goes right to credibility. Well, absolutely it does. And that's, I guess, the, the easy way that is to, if we can go through, we'll answer the questions. And yes, I hope to be able to go through some timeline to identify where you were, what you were doing specifically in relation to this, this case. Anyways, I know I'm giving you guys a hard time being argumentative about certain things, but I mean, really, I'm a human being, and when you guys do all these things, I, I've got to, anyways, I'll, I'll try and truncate it a little bit more, but. Anyways, the answer to that is no, but the 800-pound gorilla in the room is that's a life 25 sentence, you know. It really comes down to credibility, right. and, and not only credibility, but then again, timeline. I mean, between what Carlos and my roles were respectively and this and that. The answer is no to that question. Bernardo keeps acting like he's tried helping the detectives, but that they just won't listen to him. Cleverly, the detectives play along to make him think he has the upper hand. Bernardo says it goes right to credibility, criticizing the way the detectives have handled his case. It's interesting that the word credibility is on his mind. Once more, this functions as projection. He projects his own lack of credibility onto the detectives. It could be argued that his experiential memory betrays him here, that the experiential memory won't let him forget what he's done, both in relation to his crimes and to his deception in this interview, and that it's this guilty knowledge that manifests itself in his language. There's another similar occurrence of the noun credibility. If you'd like to provide me with more information about the specific occurrences that occurred in Peel region, then we can talk about that after the focus of what we're here for today. And that's, but that's but it is part of the focus. Well, it, it is. It is. It is, and it isn't. I mean, I think obviously, is. directly, we're here today to deal with the uh, the Balkovich matter that you're aware of. But dealing with me, and it comes down to credibility. Well, it comes down to credibility. It absolutely, it does, and that's um, that's what we're here to talk about today. This word is sensitive to Bernardo and his agenda. He says he knows he's giving the detectives a hard time, and thus acts considerate. He repeats the generic and ridiculously obvious observation that he's a human being, which again lacks emotional dimension. With his embarrassingly obvious attempts to deviate from simple questions that we observed in the previous excerpt, we can now be sure of why his observation lacks emotional dimension. It's because he's not really affected as a human being. He's annoyed that he's being held accountable, and that's different. He's acted offended as a self-defense mechanism, making the detectives look guilty, when in reality he's projected his own guilt, his own knowledge of guilt, onto the detectives. He says, anyways, the answer to that is no. Anyways, downplays the importance of the detective's question, and simultaneously reveals what Bernardo wants to be the syntactic focus here, his complaints. Instead, he wants his own prideful agenda to be the focus. Had you ever met her? I'm going to answer that with, uh, I don't remember, because if I did or I didn't, I don't remember. But I know an ex-girlfriend tried to say I might have, but I guess I don't remember. Um, you are obviously are aware of her disappearance? Yeah, sort of. Okay. Do you recall when you became aware of this? The best that I can really recollect is after I was in jail. It didn't follow me as much. Um, the date, obviously, June the 19th, 1990 was the date. But, but, but you know, other, other than that, I don't remember. You know, maybe I, I heard about it before, but I can't, can't recall. I can't recall if I did or not. But I remember in jail, 
I had newspapers after that fact, and then I saw some of that. So. He says, I'm going to answer that one with, I don't remember. He doesn't simply say he doesn't remember. He prefaces his alleged lack of memory with words that reveal his calculating nature. These are the words of someone likely to hide information that damages their agenda. In the final passages, we note his repetitions of the verb remember. This verb has a restrictive function. In a setting like this, we should take note of a subject's desire to use this word instead of simply stating what they've experienced. Why? Because it's implied that they're remembering, so saying remember is redundant. In many cases, redundant and restricted verbs indicate that the subject shares what's convenient for them and leaves out the rest. It's like a switch. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed. What do you find interesting about this interview? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, click the subscribe button and feel free to leave a like. If you'd like to support this channel even further, consider signing up on Patreon. You can find a link to Patreon in the description below. That's it for now. I hope you found it useful. See you in the next video.